Finally, after such a long wait, I bring you the review of Andromeda I promised what now seems to be eons ago. As you might recall, one of the patches broke the game on my saved file, forcing me to wait impatiently for quite some time until it was fixed. Lo and behold, here it is. This spoiler-free review is based on an almost 100 hour long playthrough of the game, during which I completed 96% of its content. For the sake of convenience I will refer to Ryder as a woman and Shepard as a man. I actually loved Femshep too, but on my first go in the original trilogy I rolled with a male Shepard, so let's just go with that. To keep spoilers away, I won't talk about the story much at all. Now, you probably realized already that Mass Effect Andromeda is a controversial game that has received a mixed reception from fans and critics alike. I will try to get all the negatives about it out of the way first so that we can focus on the more positive or neutral elements later on. And the first of the product's cons are the glitches. There are more of them than I'm used to in a Bioware game, but I'd still argue this was a considerably smoother launch than the average Bethesda release. Regardless, on numerous occasions your immersion with the game's awesome galaxy may be broken by silly visual glitches, the mouse cursor appearing in the middle of the screen during a conversation, sporadic audio hiccups, character animations bugging out, textures taking longer to load than usual, and so on. My experience with the game was mostly quite smooth, however. Considering how long the game took me to finish, I can gladly say that I didn't come across a huge number of these. My main issue is in fact with Andromeda's stability, more specifically the stuttering. Again, most of the time it is not a big issue, but there were instances when it got really bad. These annoying stutters are definitely more frequent than other glitches. In fact, even though the frame rate seems to have been somewhat improved through patching, it, the stuttering appears to have gotten significantly worse since the game's launch day version. In the first few hours of my playthrough I also encountered some crashes, but these seem to have resolved themselves completely after I messed about a bit with the graphics settings. The user interface and menus all look pretty, but they're actually quite counterintuitive and unpleasant to navigate at times. It's clear that they were made mostly with a controller in mind. This is actually a plus for console players or those who prefer to use a controller on PC, but I played it with a keyboard and mouse and so it loses points from me on that front. Moreover, being able to have only three active powers to choose from at any given time sucks. It's a simplification from the design of the original trilogy that again seems to have been made in mind with the fewer buttons available on the controller than the vast array of customizable keys on the keyboard. Something that is kinda disappointing is the new character creator. It's not bad by any means and I think people have been exaggerating its flaws. It's really not that hard to create a good looking rider with it because god knows that default face isn't human and I recommend going with a custom one instead. Actually some new options have been patched in already. However, judging by their previous products, Bioware could have done much better and given us even more options to choose from. To be honest, Andromeda generally doesn't make the best first impression. Uh, the first small portion of the story features some of the game's worst writing and most boring sequences. What should have been an exciting fresh start for the series turns into the familiar fight for the fate of the galaxy story way too quickly, with evil bipedal aliens to boot. Only they are piss poor villains in comparison to the ominous reapers. It's easily the weakest prologue of the Mass Effect series, but trust me when I say that it does get much better later on. Plenty of hatred has been directed at Andromeda's developers due to the facial animations of the characters. And while it's true that the overall experience is an uneven one that falls entirely flat in comparison to the third Witcher's graphics, in the end it really isn't as bad as people make it out to be. The .05 patch fixed the worst offenders, though it shouldn't have come to that in the first place. There is also very little variety in the alien NPC faces, especially for the Asari. Though it is wonderful to see so many female Torians, Krogans and Solarians this time around. Fortunately, the animation quality is decent as a whole and lives up to your expectations in other departments, such as combat and body movements. The visual fidelity of the less humanoid alien species, such as the Krogan and Solarian races, is especially impressive and paints a stark contrast to the outdated meshes utilized for the human faces. The music featured in Andromeda is more minimalistic in design than that of the previous composer. This is not necessarily worse, at times it actually feels more atmospheric, but generally less epic and not quite as memorable as what we've grown to love about the original trilogy. You will not find the fantastic sense of wonder of the first game, the cyberpunk themes of Mass Effect 2, or the somber melodies of the third part here. Nonetheless, the sound design holds up, weapons and enemies make all the right noises, and the voice acting, except for some pretty bad side characters, is stellar. Frida Wolf, the actress behind the female rider's voice, made the biggest impression on me and for this reason I recommend picking Sarah as the player character. 
She delivers a markedly more emotional performance than Mark Mir, and even more so than Jennifer Hill. Unlike Shepard, Ryder is no war hero. She is selected as the replacement human pathfinder at the very last minute when things turn sour. And although she doesn't have a proper military background, she has of course received combat training. Over the course of just this one, albeit very long game, I believe I've grown to like Ryder slightly more than Shepard. She has so much more character than the stiff veteran archetype that we controlled in the original trilogy, even surpassing Femship in her charm if you ask me. Ryder is what you get when you mix Shepard with Hawk from Revan H2, minus the obnoxious parts of the latter. She truly is one of the most likable and somewhat laid-back protagonists that Bioware has ever written. Many were concerned about the possibility of Andromeda turning into Mass Effect Inquisition and drawing too much from the tedious single-player MMO design of the third Dragon Age installment. Although it is clear that some small aspects were inspired by that game, I'm happy to say that there is evidently less boring filler here than there. This is still not quite the project or obsidian level of quality side content, but Bioware is slowly getting there. As a whole, the open world, or should I say worlds, they have created for Andromeda feel substantially better and more interesting than that of Dragon Age. Nomad is also vastly superior to the Mako from the original Mass Effect trilogy, making it a joy to explore each planet. Frankly, some of the environments are stunning, though unfortunately most of it does boil down to the most overused space opera art design of worlds stuck in one type of ecosystem each. There's the desert one, the snowy one, the jungle, and so on. The new galaxy map is gorgeous though, it has been completely revamped with beautiful transition animations plus the scanning of planets that we all hated from Mass Effect 2 is back and has been reworked into the new system in a way that actually makes sense and removes so much of the tedium that used to be involved in this activity. Sure, they could have reduced the sheer quality of worlds to scan here, but I have to admit that I found reading all that information about them quite fascinating. That could be just me, yet I think many fellow space geeks will enjoy this. Surprisingly, it is the core gameplay that is Andromeda's strongest point. Combat is more dynamic thanks to the addition of the jump pack, as well as more fluid character movement in general. You can even pull off these awesome dash moves that remind me of Vanquish, which not only look stylish but are also very useful in combat with larger enemies that like to charge you head on. Moreover, if you spec your rider to be a biotic like I did, then all the jump pack animations will be replaced by different ones that fit the protagonist's abilities. This is the kind of nice little detail that I really enjoy seeing in the video games. Classes are gone, but not really as they've been basically turned into profiles. The vanguard is steel, so I don't really mind. The gunplay is tight and satisfying, a natural evolution in Mass Effect 3's already competent third-person shooter mechanics. The cover system is now automatic and its usefulness has suffered, but this is understandable considering how much more dynamic fighting the enemy is in Andromeda. Most of the time you will be darting about the battlefield anyway. The squad members we get suffer from the same syndrome that the original trilogy had, in that the two most boring human companions are also the first ones you start off with. To be fair, Liam is okay, as he is written as a simple and overly friendly guy and it worked on me. Cora, on the other hand, while I did grow to respect her, she was the only member of the crew that I didn't really like that much even by the end of the game. Drac is likable and endearing, but he falls into the stereotype of a Krogan barbarian all too often. PB is the comic relief, a real goofball that I went from tolerating to befriending, but I can't see how some might really dislike her. Vetra, the female Turian mercenary, somehow manages to reach Garrus's level of badassery and might be my favorite. Jal is the most interesting of the lot, a representative of the Angara, who happen to be the only sentient species in the hideous cluster of the Andromeda galaxy that don't want to kill us all off. As such, he falls into the same category that Tally did, being an ultimately relatable character from a foreign species who serves as a conduit between our people and theirs. Other members of the crew are fair, either slightly worse or on par with what we had in the original trilogy. Gale is a bit of an asshole engineer, Lexi is the cute Asari doctor, Suvi is the even more adorable co-pilot, and Kalo is the proud Acelerian helmsman. Companion banter is now much more frequent, to the point where it might cut off before previous lines of dialogue can finish. This has always been a much loved feature of Bioware's games and it works perfectly here, though it would have been nice if they had thought about the possibility of NPCs interrupting each other or indeed themselves, funnily enough. I recommend going with various squadmates to explore different configurations and to see what they all have to say to each other planet side. The question that is probably on the minds of both newcomers to the series and old fans who have not yet returned to the Mass Effect universe is exactly how does Andromeda hold up against the critically acclaimed original trilogy? The answer is, sadly, not so well. Don't get me wrong, Bioware has made some obvious improvements that are to be expected with the passing of time, especially from a pure gameplay standpoint. This must be the best Mass Effect has ever been. 
In various other aspects, Andromeda surpasses the original three titles in quality, but if I was to decide which of the lot was better as a whole at the time of its release, then I can without a doubt say that most, if not all, of the previous installments in the series surpass Andromeda in this department. Mass Effect 2 particularly holds the crown in my eyes. It had so many wow kind of moments that literally gave me goosebumps. For example, when the rebuilt Normandy SR2 showed up in front of my eyes. It was amazing. Andromeda simply lacks moments like these. Something that is really disappointing on Bioware's part is the overall lack of innovation. If we look at Seda Project and their Vjedmin trilogy, we can clearly see that each Witcher game was both mechanically and thematically different from the others. With Bioware's sci-fi RPGs, although we've seen some major changes in the gameplay department, the core remains the same since Knights of the Real Republic came out back in 2003. For the most part, we're still saving the galaxy by flying from planet to planet on our own version of the Millennium Falcon. We even get ripoffs of Tatooine and Hoth. Of course, it's an awesome formula that's gotten me and countless other fans coming back for more, but it would have been nice to see something truly fresh after all these years. It is hard to sum up Andromeda as a whole because it is such a mixed package. At times it was truly amazing and it made me feel like I was playing Mass Effect for the first time again, exploring distant worlds, meeting strange aliens, forging alliances and falling in love. But just as often, if not more, I was grinding my teeth in frustration at the stuttering or underwhelming story content. The plot overall is not bad, generally getting better as it goes on, and finishing in a considerably more satisfying way than Mass Effect 3 originally did. However, it's also quite unoriginal and boring at times. In the end, I have to say that Andromeda is a bit of a disappointment. I enjoyed it and would love to see some DLC, hopefully a sequel, but sadly it looks as though EA is putting the series in hold, if not pulling the plug entirely. It hurts me to see Bioware's new Destiny copy, Anthem, being prioritized over this. Andromeda could have been so much more. If you're a fan of the original trilogy, then you should definitely pick this up at some point, maybe when the price is a bit lower. If not, I can still recommend it to sci-fi lovers, again, you should get it during a sale and don't set your expectations too high. I'm looking forward to spending more time on Andromeda's multiplayer, which I have only dabbled in so far, and it was good from what I tried. But what I'd prefer to see is a continuation of Ryder's story. After all, this was just Helios. The rest of Andromeda is yet to be discovered. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I was glad to finally have this review done and com the game completed as well, after so much waiting. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I've now got a, the intro music, which is which was done by my f American friend uh, Leapmaster. Uh, I'll send a link to, will drop a link to his uh, SoundCloud somewhere in the description. And also, please uh, make sure to follow my new uh, pages on Facebook and Twitter, which I've created in preparation for some big announcements that I'll have, which probably around the time when we reach 1,000 subscribers. So, thanks again, guys. And I'll catch you later.